Hi, David Vizard here, and you guys are watching Paratech 10. Just as a reminder, this is the channel that brings you hardcore tech accurately and functionally. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the reasons why that our AFR enforcer head for an LS3 did not produce the top end horsepower that it would have appeared to have needed to produce as per our flow diagrams. Now, if you want to see all about the cylinder head, you need to watch uh, our original episode. I'll put the episode number across the bottom here. Now, if you look at the power curve, you will see, and I'll put the power curve in it in a moment, you will see that at the bottom right up through the middle of the RPM range and, into, uh, and mostly towards the top, it outpowered the stock cylinder heads. Also, at the very top end of the rev range, it outpowered the stock cylinder heads. But right around where peak power, the RPM where peak power was produced, it was down about 15 or so horsepower. Why was that? I mean, isn't this supposed to be a better head according to our flow figures? Now, I think I'd like to put a halt on things at this moment and for what I believe to be a very good reason. Now, you can see that what I've just shown you in that power curve is an absolute straight A to B test. A versus B. So would you say that that was a legitimate test for what we are doing here? Most internet publications and magazines would have left things at that and never questioned why one was different to the other probably wouldn't have come to an answer anyway and I this does sound like I'm running down a lot of genuinely enthusiastic tech writers out there but we're going to go a step further than that remember I'm not really a writer I'm a research engineer if my engineering capabilities can't come up with a, a solid answer to why that one patch of RPM there or any of it in fact is not always better than the stock head as our flow program uh, uh, indicated then I'm not doing my job right so here's the deal in order to do the job properly it's my job and I guess Andy's as well to find out why we didn't make that power fortunately experience was on our side we could see exactly what it was when we looked at the, the spec of the engine as it was tested with the stock heads on. Now, as I've pointed out many times, lobe centerline angles on cams, as far as the cam industry is concerned, is very poorly supported in terms of having it right. This is actually the case that we have here. The AFR head has 208 diameter intake valves, whereas the stock head has 2.160, I believe it is, intake valves. Now, what does this mean? Well, for a given displacement of engine, we don't change anything else. The AFR head needs a lobe centerline angle about one and a half to maybe two degrees tighter than the stock head. Well, how much difference is that going to be? Well, fortunately, I can use my camshaft program and run it backwards, so to speak, to find out what the difference would be in the requirement for the AFR head 
compared with the stock head. Now, I'm just going to look at it in the difference here. We're not going to use that difference because the original cam in this engine was on 114 degrees. That would have been just right for a 5.3 liter LS engine. We don't have a 5.3. It would also have been just right if that engine was running like a 13 and a half to one compression. We don't have 13 and a half to one. We do have 12 to one. So that would cause the low center line angle to spread over what we normally use for uh, would be used for a 10.5 to 1 compression. So let me run those figures and see just where we got to. I'm sure many of you know that I have for the past 22 years or so, make, no, make that 28 been developing a CAM program that calculates what CAM you need for your motor, not something generic. Now, I've tried selling this to camshaft companies, but it's amazing. Even though I've had several or a couple of CAM companies approve of the fact that it really works, they don't seem to want to use it. They're preferring to sell CAMs that, now this is a staggering figure, 95% of the time are on the wrong lobe center line angle. Uh, it's as if they've got a sales thing here that works. They don't want to improve it until somebody else steps in. Unfortunately, I don't think there's anybody else out there immediately available that can do this. So if a cam company were to take this up, it could be a year, maybe more, before somebody has an equivalent program. Anyway. I ran the numbers through. I've got an LS program here that is well on the way and it will compute the differences quite well. Much better than a guess. Well, 90% better than a guess. And the answer I came up with is had the AFR head had a cam with two degrees tighter lobe center line angle, which would have given it, in this case, the same error as the cam that was in the motor, the 114 one, it would have given it the same error from what is optimum as that cam. So in that terms, both of them were off optimum by the same amount. With that, the program predicted 23 horsepower more than it made on the other program. Now, you'll notice that puts it at three odd horsepower more than the stock cylinder head. That's the LS head, head from AFR. That dip in the curve would have made three more horsepower total. However, it would have also been up by about 18 foot-pounds through most of the RPM range, maybe as much as 20. So it would have done much better had the cam been right. And let me just reiterate the problem here. The cam that was in the motor for the stock head was nearer correct for the stock head than the cam would have been for the LS3 head from AFR. So we're saying this is not a true back-to-back -back test. Oh, it was. It just didn't re just did not give us the results that were fair because we had the cam more optimum for the stock head than we did for the LS head. Now I'm going to. I'm not going to go through and check a cam that's just two degrees tighter just to satisfy your need to see the difference in power. No, I'm going to go straight to Brian Tooley and get a cam on the right lobe center line angle for our spec. That works out according to my cam program at 107 or 108, somewhere between that. And if you've watched my other cam programs, you'll see that it's better to be slightly on the tight side than it is on the loose side. If we do that, I predict our S10 is go going to go way faster. So, here's the deal. I'm going to give Brian a call and have him grind up a cam uh, on a low center line angle that's appropriate. 
I'm going to see if he can do 108, but if he can't, he has one on 107, I believe, and we'll go with that. Anyway, our next move will be to install that cam. But in the next edition of this program, what you're going to see is that AFR LS head can do in very simple porting and then ported with bigger valves in. So with that in mind, let me sign off here. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to like, etc. So until next time, I will be seeing you. Adios.